Amen? Amen. We're going to look to the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say. And um, if I would like to give a title to the message, I'm going to call it, How to be Redeemed from Sin. Can you say amen? amen? You know, there are times that we keep committing sins and uh, then we say, well, you know, I don't want to do this the next time. And maybe if an altar call is given, we come and repent over here. But as soon as we leave the church and get back, we do the same thing. Amen? So my will, my, my mind, my emotion should come under the total control of the will, mind, and emotion of the Spirit of God that lives and abides on the inside of me. And when I begin to surrender to Him, my brother, my sister, that's the best way for me to come out of sin. If I try by myself, I will fail. Let me give you a few verses. Go to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians chapter 5. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Everyone say, walk in the Spirit. Why is Paul saying, walk in the Spirit? The reason why Paul says, walk in the Spirit, you see, there's only one way that we can walk in the Spirit if we have committed our lives to the will of God. Not my will, but your will, O oh God. Let your will be activated in my life. Let my will be put aside because my will is selfishness. Okay, I put it aside. Now I accept your will in my life. And when the will of God begins to operate, my brother, my sister, then the, then the apostle Paul says in Galatians 5 and verse 16, he says, walk in the spirit. What happens when you walk in the spirit? You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. The only way for us not to fulfill the lust of the flesh, you see, the flesh is lusting after the things of the world. Amen. The flesh is always, always directed towards the things of the world. But my spirit is directed to the things of the Spirit of God. So Paul says, you have to walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Simple. Amen. Let's read verse 18. It says in verse 18, But if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Amen. We got to be led of the Spirit. Let's go to verse 25. Verse 25. If you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Go to Romans chapter 8, and I want you to read verse 13. Romans chapter 8. And read verse 13. It says in verse 13 over here, For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the Spirit do modify or, 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 or destroy the deeds of the body, you shall live. This is what Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Now, coming to the main point, the question is, you might say to me, Pastor, can you give me some more tips as to how I can really put an end to the desires of the flesh? How can I walk in the spirit? How can I be successful? How can I begin to be a person that will know that you know, God wants me to be victorious? Go to the book of Psalm 119. The book of Psalm 119. Oh, from verse 9. Psalm 119. From verse 9 onwards. Now if you, if you open to the book of Psalm, you know, uh, and if you want to study Hebrew alphabets, it's all in the book of Psalm. Every eight verses, you know, you check, you have one alphabet, Hebrew alphabet, with the English uh, meaning over there. I don't know if you noticed that, but you can study the alphabet. You know, 22 alphabets divide the book of Psalm into eight. You know, every eight verses you have one alphabet. I have beginning Aleph, next Beth, and it goes on. So anyway, Psalm 119, I want you to read verse 9. It says in verse 9, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Listen, my brother, my sister, anyone wants to cleanse yourself from the filthiness of this world? Do you want to purge yourself? Do you want to come to a place where you're able to present yourself unto God, holy and acceptable unto Him? 
Do you want to be pleasing to God in everything that you do? Then we've got to cleanse ourselves. Well, what is it that cleanses us? His word. Amen. It's his word. You refuse to read the word. And if you do not read the word for one week or two weeks, my brother, my sister, you collect a lot of things from the world. Amen. I, I noticed a, a small uh, thing at one of the cold storage over there. And this is what is mentioned over there. You don't visit me for one week. This is at the cold storage. You don't come here for one week. It makes one week. You don't go to the, uh, to the word of God for one week. It makes one week. Amen. I think he, he took it out from the Bible, I think. If there's a verse in the Bible like that. So anyway, verse 9. I just read verse 9. It says, we need to cleanse our ways. Taking heed to the word. Verse 10. With, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. My brother, my sister, we got to go to the commandments of God. We got to study the precepts of God, the word of God. And when we begin to do it, my brother, my sister, we'll begin to seek the Lord and not wander away. Verse 11. Thy words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Isn't it so simple? This is the ABC of successful living. Thy word have I hid in my heart. What is it that we are hiding in, the heart, in our hearts? Is it anything other than the word? My brother, my sister, I think, let's make up our mind. We're going to spend quality time with the word of God. We're going to pile up in our heart the word of God. I'll tell you why. I have many keys with me. I have three keys for the church. I have six keys for my office. My office, my cabin, another place where we stock up some things over there, some equipment, six keys. I have five or six keys for my house. So if I keep all the keys together, I got a bunch of keys. Amen? Now, if I'm carrying a bunch of keys, now please listen to me, if I'm carrying a bunch of keys, and which I do most, most often, I carry the keys with me, amen? Uh, I know exactly which key out of the bunch that I can use to open the church. I know exactly from the big bunch of keys which key I can take to open my office or the key to open my house. So I got a key to suit every lock. Now, it'll be foolishness for me to have a bunch of keys and not knowing which key, and I'm trying 30, 40 keys to open one lock. So I know which key to open which lock. Listen to me, church. You know exactly which scripture to use when a certain sin hits you. Amen? Let's not search for scriptures when something is hitting us. And that's what many Christians do. And if that's what many Christians are doing, then we are baby Christians. We have not gone to the word of God. We have not searched the word of God. We are not hiding the word of God in us so that when sin comes, you know, he says, I hide your word that I might not sin against you. David knew exactly for every attack that comes, to, comes his way, he had a key to unlock the power of God. Don't run around. Don't dial 9845704. Pastor, I'm in trouble. Can you tell me which scripture I must use? Find it for yourself. Amen? Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Find it for yourself. Have scriptures hidden in your heart so that you will not sin against God. Thy word have I hid. Pile up the word of God. Have the word of God, you know, piled up. You know, I like what Carl Cook said, and I learned something from what he said. He's an old man, 73 years old, and been walking with the Lord for more than 50 years, been, been in ministry. He's a, he's a chancellor of TPI, and he's got Bible colleges around the world and teaching around the world. You know what he said, one of the statements he made, he says, for me to prepare, for me to preach for one hour 
This is, I'm talking about a veteran of a man as far as the word is concerned. He says, for me to preach one hour, I study 20 hours. And I felt so ashamed of myself. How much time do I spend to preach for one hour? How many hours do I spend? And he says he reads about 250 pages of material to compile a sermon. My brother, my sister, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, that's why I'm encouraging you to come. I've been learning something from this man. And, and, and it dawned on me that I'm feeding sheep. And if I'm feeding sheep, I don't, I don't want to give anything that is nonsense. Rubbish. I want to give something that's solid. And in order for me to give something that's solid, I, go to, I have to go to something that's really solid, and that's the word of God. Becky got up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and she came to the dining room. She looked at me. She's right at the back. She came to the dining room. I don't know why she got up 2 in the morning, probably looking for the fridge. I'm just joking. Maybe she came because the lights were on. She came and she seen me with the Bible open. If you came five this morning, I was with the Bible open. So if I went to, went, if I went to sleep at three and woke up at five, I slept for two hours. And I said, if I don't study the word, what can I serve you? Thy words have I hid in my heart. My brother, my sister, I don't want, you know, me being a pastor to just have a calling. It's not just a calling. I'm saying to myself, I, you know, I said, Lord, I don't want to just fill in the gap over here. I don't want to come and preach a sermon and just fill in a gap over here and, and to kill time. And then for you to come on a Sunday, uh, maybe two hours or something, and then go back, you know, go back empty. No, that's not what I want to do. And if that's, what I, if that's what is what I'm doing, my brother, my sister, I'm wasting my time, I'm wasting your time, and I'm wasting God's time. We need to leave, we need to leave monkey business aside. And that's my prayer, that every one of us will get serious. And if you're serious, can you say amen? amen. We need to get serious. Because I tell you, my brother, my sister, I'm, just, I'm quoting what Brother Ambi said. Jesus Christ is coming back any time. Perhaps even tonight, while we are sleeping tonight, he may come back. But when he comes back, will we still find ourselves sleeping in the bed? We will not, let us not be disappointed when we, go, when we get up in the morning to find that one of our spouse is gone. Amen? Or our child is gone, or a brother or a sister. The other day, this is not to embarrass Brother Sammy, but he brought an awareness around the world. I'll tell you what happened. I shook up. I want you to listen. At about 8 o'clock in the evening, Brother Sammy called me, or 8 or 9 in the, in the, in the night. He called and he told me, he said, Pastor, the rapture is taking place. I said, What? He says, the rapture is taking place. I said, where are you? <laughs> are you calling for me? <laughs> so he said, no. And he was really worried. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's in the news. So I said, the news? What news? And quickly, Sandra and myself put in our own BBC and CNN. And no news. But then, you know, we, we, both of us are talking. You know, sometimes this won't come out immediately. So he said, Pastor, i seen it. He said, I'll, I'll give you the clipping. So he sent me the link. And actually, it was news from CNN. Am I right, CNN? So news from CNN, and both of us are watching. So, and the news said from Australia and some parts of you know, uh, uh, Europe and all those places. So immediately, Sandra called up her sister. <laughs> Nine o'clock our, our time, which was past midnight, they were snoring. She calls him up and she says, the rapture's taking place. <laughs> it started from Australia. <laughs> and she gets up from her sleep and, you know, in her sleep she says, Melvin, <laughs> the rapture's taking place. 
So then when Melvin comes, he says, we two pastors are left behind. But then, it was a clipping. I don't blame Brother Sammy for that. But in one way, thank you for having done that. It was a clipping being sent to him by somebody from Left Behind series. <laughs> and if you had to see the clipping, you will believe it's real. It looks so real. Okay? So anyway, this is what happened. The reason why I'm telling you this, that could be real. It could be real. It could happen tonight. But when it happens tonight, as Brother Ambi always says, will I be in that number? Amen. Amen. When the roll is called up yonder, we used to sing that, that beautiful hymn. I don't know why we don't sing that hymn now. When the roll is called up yonder, we'll be there and not here. Amen. My brother, my sister, it's important that we begin to dig into the word from today and become word-based Christians and become word Christians and we begin to grow up, to be mature, to be strong and hide the words of God in us so that when sin comes our way, it will just rebound away. And finally, in the book of Joshua chapter 7, I want you to listen to this. I'm not going to read the verses. But in the book of Joshua chapter 7, Joshua is so confident. He just conquered a couple of places. The walls of Jericho just came down. And if that came down, it became talk of the town. It, you know, people were saying it was so supernatural when those walls collapsed down. The name of Joshua was mentioned everywhere. Now Joshua was so confident. He comes and he says, he tells his people, he says, what is that little city down there? And they said, that city is called the city of Ai. And one of the guys said, wait a minute, Joshua. Don't send everyone. It's a small city. Only send 3,000 people. We'll go and wipe them out. And they sent 3,000 people. Listen to this. 3,000 people went. And as, as fast as they went, they came running back, beaten up, bleeding, wounded. Joshua looked and said, what happened? You know what they said? 37 people defeated us. What? We just now brought the walls down and you guys go there and 37 people beat you up and you came running? Joshua fell on the ground. And he began to weep before the Lord. And he was crying. God, why? And these are the words of Joshua. Why have you done this, O God? You brought us thus far. And for us to be killed and defeated. And for the people out to talk and say, see what their God has been doing. And the Lord said, Joshua, get up. Why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Get up, Joshua. I'll give you the reason. And when Joshua stood up, this is what the Lord said. Listen, church. The defeat in the entire nation. And in our case, the defeat in our entire home is because of one reason, the sin in the camp. Are you listening to what I'm telling you, church? Sin in the camp. And Joshua said, well, what do you mean, Lord? What do you mean sin in the camp? He says, there's somebody who's committed sin. And a curse has come upon everyone. Church, close the door to sin. Otherwise, face defeat in your home. Because when the devil comes in, he will begin to rip us apart. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He can only come to kill and steal and destroy if we allow him. We're going to say no to him. And give him his walking ticket and try to get right out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, sin in the camp. And the Lord said to Joshua, he said, Joshua, not only sin in the camp and this defeat, but you have turned your backs against the enemy. My brother, my sister, we should have him turning his back against us because we will keep him running. But why today? The church of Jesus Christ 
is running in circles. Running round and round, round and round, round and round, one defeat after another defeat, one defeat after another defeat, one, one, one defeat here, another defeat. And finally, you now we are being beaten up and battered and bruised and, and, and injured and frustrated and depressed. And, uh, and then we begin to think, don't you think it was better for us to have been out in the world rather than coming over here and getting dried up? I hope I'm not speaking to any dried up Christians. Amen. I only hope I'm speaking to victorious Christians. What is it that brings us victory? Get rid of sin. The Lord said, Joshua, get up, Joshua. Get rid of sin right now. And Joshua called the tribe by name, tribe after tribe, until Achan came from the tribe of Judah. And they were stoned and burnt. And after having destroyed sin from the camp, the Lord said, now go. And when they went, they had victory. God wants us to have victory. He doesn't want us to have defeat. We're the children of the Most High. Amen. And when people outside, when they see us, they must marvel to see what God can do through you and me. He who knows us, God shall do. Somebody give me the reference. Sorry? Reference. See, that's what I said. Iris word. Daniel 11.32. Amen. He who knows is God. Can I see the hands of those who know your God? You can do great exploits. Not know about your God. You know, many of us know about our God. We know about him because we come to church on a Sunday and we have a sermon or a teaching being preached. And that's how we know about him. And when we go back, we forget about everything. We go back into the world and, you know, we begin to do worldly things. And uh, when we go back to our office and when we begin to talk in the office and people, when they look at us, we are just like them. No difference. Like that man in Belgium told me, he said, I will come to the Lord when I see my wife who's a believer change because most often she's worse than me. My brother, my sister, there should be a distinction between us and the people out in the world. Amen? People must come and ask us, why you don't do the things that we do? And when they come and ask us, we can give them answers. Amen? And believe me, those answers can change their lives. Hallelujah. We'll have church full. The reason why we don't have a church full is because we don't have good answers to give people to come and ask us questions. Can I ask you a question? Peter, James, and John were in that boat that night. And suddenly they seemed like a ghost. And they all got afraid. And when they got afraid, they heard a voice speak. And the voice said, it's me, be not afraid. Peter stood up. The other eleven stood up along with Peter. And Peter said, Lord, if, it bid, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come unto you. And the Lord said, come. And Peter stepped out and started to walk. The question is, it's a miracle. Amen? But when did the miracle take place? Can somebody tell me? Very good answer when Peter walked. Believed on the Lord, okay. Stepped out. First step. In faith. We had very good answers, but I'll give you the right answer. When he had his eyes on Jesus. Yes, he stepped out. Yes, he walked in faith. He was obedient. All that was possible, but it would not have been possible if he never had his eyes on Jesus. You know why? Because as he was walking, and as he, as he had his eyes on Jesus, suddenly he realized, hey, I'm walking on the water. Blub, 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 blub. Took his eyes off Jesus. And every day from today, have your eyes on Jesus. If you have your eyes on Jesus, you will walk over every circumstances. 
the problem is when we take our eyes of Jesus we are sinking amen if the enemy is coming against you if he's coming hard against you forget it have your eyes on Jesus you'll walk all over him amen you take your eyes of Jesus and he will walk over you so I want you to pray along with me a very important prayer that we're going to pray let's leave monkey business aside let's be serious pray this along with me father I just heard your word it was not a word from the pastor it was a word from you and I receive it not from the pastor but from you you have spoken to me and I thank you that through your word you are showing me how to come out of sin all this while I tried I tried my best to come out of it but I was not able to but now I know according to your word how I can come out and from today I want to live not according to the flesh but according to the spirit I want to walk not according to the flesh but to walk in the spirit so that I will not die and dear God I commit myself into your hands teach me your ways cleanse me O oh God Lord that I might have your word hidden in my heart that I, will not be able to, that I will not be able to sin when sin comes my way. I commit myself. Lord, if there's any sin in the camp, I want to get rid of it right now so that I will have victory and not defeat. In Jesus' name. Amen.